Hey guys, and welcome back to my RuneScape series, A Beginner's Guide. Uh, this is episode 3, and I welcome you guys back. Um, so, last episode we left off by sailing the boat and taking our the boat all the way here to Lumbridge. So, looking at the paths here, we're going to start with uh, the Lumbridge quest, so we'll click on that. Uh, before I get into this, though, I, I kind of want to mention that uh, at the end of this video... I'll be kind of talking about the future of this series. Um, and before anything happens, I, I'm not stopping the series, I'm continuing it. I just want to kind of explain to you guys my plans of the series. Uh, because when I initially started this this account, I, I kind of just wanted to help beginners, but I really had no plan on how I was going to do it. So at the end of the series, I'm kind of going to lay out exactly what I would like to achieve with this series and kind of give it like the definitive uh, beginning and end point. Uh, just so you guys can have it. All right, so now that it's explained quickly, I'll of course go into more detail at the end of this video, kind of explaining what those steps are, but let's get into the the game itself. So right here, we're going to do the very first quest, which is, I'm gonna extend this a little bit. Maybe I'll just say this a little bit first, because I don't like it being cut off like that. Perfect. So we're gonna start here with the first quest, Cook Assistant. Which is not only the first quest we're doing, but it's actually the first quest that's made in the game, put back, put in the game way back in 2001. So let's talk to the cook man. So we're pretty much going to help him bake a cake for the Duke's birthday. That's pretty much our goal right now. And what we need to do is we need to find three pieces of um, cooking materials for him, namely super fine flour, a large egg, and great milk. So I'm kind of going to show you where it is on the um, on the map here, uh, where each location is, and I'm going to cut the video, and then I'm going to run there, show you it, cut the video again, go to the other place, and then cut the video again to finally get the last piece, and then I'll cut the video one last time, and I'll meet you guys right back here in the chef's castle. So to get the cow milk, you need to go right where this marker is right here. The cow is right there. You can milk up, uh, milk it up right there. Second. You need to go to this chicken pen right here on the inside. Oops. On the inside of the chicken pen, there is on the ground a very large egg or a, a super egg or something. I don't remember what the exact name of the item was. And then finally, uh, you will come to this mill over here to pick one piece of wheat, climb up the ladder twice, and then you'll put the uh, wheat in the hopper and you will be able to make the find the ground uh, wheat. I'm sorry to find the ground flower for the quest, and then I'll we'll come back here and turn it all in. All right, I will see you guys in one second once I get to the cows. Alrighty. All right, guys, here we are back at the cow pen. I just entered right here. The building we're in is the building right there, the castle. I'm gonna pick the bucket up, and I'm gonna milk this dairy cow. And as you can see, we got our top quality milk. Um, I. I don't think I'm actually going to cut for this uh, next um, part because the egg is just, you know, two steps away over here. You can see right there the super large egg right here. And this is the second part of the quest. And now I'm just going to run over to the, to the manor where my marker is right here. For this I will cut and I'll see you guys in one second. Alright guys, so we're back at the mill I just mentioned. You can see we're still inside this blue box, uh, which I guess I forgot to mention. Uh, whenever there's a blue box for your quest, oops, I need to zoom a little bit more, uh, your quest uh, objectives will always be inside the area, so you won't have to worry about going outside. It's kind of just a, a little bit of help for the beginners to make sure that they don't uh, run out of the area accidentally. So we got ourselves some wheat. Let's head up. I don't know if we need to talk to her first, so I'm just going to talk to her quickly. I'm looking for some fine flour from Mr. Duke himself. Okay, thanks. I'm fine. So, you can climb the ladder twice, but if you just click climb to top, it's a very much easier way. You can see there's a pot right there we're going to use in a second. So, you take the wheat, you put it in the hopper, operate the lever. We're going to climb down to the bottom. Oops. I had climbed up again already. Let's see if I can do this correctly. Bottom. We're going to take the flower pot, 
fill her up with the flour. We got ourselves some extra fine flour. So I will see you guys in one second back in Lumbridge. All right, guys, so we're back in Lumbridge right now. We're about to talk to the cook right here. I'm about to finish this quest. Give him the milk, give him the flour, give him the egg. And quest is finished in one second. Now, I actually really like this about the quest. They kind of give you the certificate right here. Um, but as you can see, the quest gives me one quest point, 300 XP, coins, greatly increase my money I have, access to the range that's talking about right here, and two treasure hunter keys. I guess this is a good enough time to get into treasure hunter as any would be. Well, I took a little bit, that's nice. Uh, so what treasure hunter is, is it's kind of a, uh, how do I word this nicely? Uh, it's kind of the MTX of the game, I guess you can say. Uh, MTX stands for microtransactions for any of you guys who are wondering. So where is it on here? Sorry, I I don't use it that much, so I kind of forget where it is. All right, so you click on this uh, this character right here, and you'll open up here. Uh, looks like there is an event going off right now. I I don't do this too much. I don't pay attention to it too much, uh, but there is four. Um, rarity levels it's white yellow orange red and purple so actually there's five i'm sorry uh so we're actually gonna light this one because i'm kind of curious what this uh red one is which is as i said the second highest oh wow um so this is what i'm kind of talking about with the the mtx of it is uh where did those springs go oh they're placed in my bank uh those springs are actually a very expensive item so i think that's a bit cheaty for a new account like mine to get but I guess that's fine <laughs> we'll see what happens and this is kind of what I mean you get a lot of experience from these and you get around um, two keys per quest so it's it's not the best thing um, but if you ignore it or to use it if you want to it doesn't matter too much it won't affect your gameplay too much if you just ignore it but some people don't like it I personally don't find it annoying at all so we'll just use all these and get them done with. As you can see, it it does boost your, your levels quite fast. Um, I'm probably going to ignore the um, the springs I got, and I'll show you why in a second. I'll just quickly go upstairs so to the bank. So climbing up these stairs, come to the top floor. Right click again, that little trick I showed you guys in a second. Um, there's a bank at the top of the building here. So if you also right click these, you can add them to your pouch. Also got a troll mask too. So I'm going to open the bank and you can see my springs here. And these are honestly a bit too much for my account because if you go in here, you can price check them. And you can see I, I just gained 675,000 gold, which I I don't think I'm going to use. I think I'm just going to keep them in my bank for now because I think that's not in a good spirit for your new account. Um, but I digress now. So now we just finished that quest. We're going to go to the blood pack quest. So, kind of before we continue on, um, today is really going to be the only day I actually go through all of these quests um, with you. Uh, kind of how I'm doing right now, I'm showing pretty much every single step. Most other episodes, I will kind of just show the screenshot of the last page where I get the completion uh, certification. Um, I may in some quests later down the line, like, where is the quest list I have here? Like, uh, Dragon... Slayer is the name of the quest. If it shows it to me, don't know where it takes place in. Whatever. So, a Dragon Slayer is one of the quests which I'll probably show some things about. Um, or some other quests I might show some things as well that are maybe a bit more complicated that you can't get through the guides. Uh, but what I'll usually do in the episodes is in the description of every episode, I do a quest in. I will just paste. A, uh, the RuneScape Wiki's official guide uh, there. As you can see here, right here, if you click the guide, you can actually search the wiki directly from your from your game. So, yeah. So we're going to go right into the Blood Pack now, and again, I'll only be doing quests today. I'm not even going to be doing the Restless Ghost on camera. I'm just going to show you what I mean is the Restless Ghost an example of what I'll usually do for the quest. Alright, so let's get into this quest right now. So what this quest pretty much does is I think it's a pretty good explanation of what quests 
can do for you in the future. So quests, as you saw in the previous quests, they give experience and they give coins and they give other items, but they can also unlock areas as well. Am I supposed to enter the catacombs now? I think so. Um, but what this quest does is it actually unlocks a special dungeon at the end of the quest, which you'll be able to see uh, once we complete it. Um, these quests, I'm pretty sure, are voiced because they want the beginners to have, you know, a more immersive time when coming through. So if you would like, you can just kind of listen to it while going through, but I'm just going to skip through it because I don't want to bore you guys too much because I, I've been kind of nervous that my past two episodes have been fairly boring because I've been talking too much, not showing enough, you know, interesting gameplay. There's a guard in that room ahead. Let's go. I just realized that I I forgot weapons. So what we're gonna have to oh thank goodness she gave us a weapon. So I can handle this. So as I mentioned last last episode, you're actually gonna want to take off your mage armor so it doesn't affect your uh, melee damage. You can keep the gloves on because they're hybrid, and the the book won't really change anything by keeping it on. Um, what's nice is about this quest too is it gives you uh, three weapons. It gives you a charge bow. It gives you a staff once you defeat Caitlyn. Uh, what a charge bow does is it doesn't need arrows, uh, but the weapon is slightly weaker because of that. But it's a very nice training weapon uh, for the beginning of your account. Alrighty, we're about to kill, or I guess slay Kaylee here. Man with the big eyes. talk to him. Are you going to kill me? Have some questions. Let's see if he's a nice guy first before we kill him. Who are you? Who are the others? What are you planning to do down here? I don't really know. I guess he seems like he's kind of just dragging this, but he really does have really big eyes. Um, enough questions. He seems like he's kind of dragged into this by other people by tricking him into the blood pack, so I'm actually going to let him go. Pick up his charge bow off the ground. Go to the next place. Conveniently wield the charge bow to fight the character over here. Uh, so as you can see, the gate is locked right here. The portcullis is closed. So we're gonna have to do once we kill Caitlyn here. Is we're gonna have to uh, operate the winch, sorry, the winch to open the gates on both sides. Um, this this quest, uh, I think the basis of this quest is just to show you the combat triangle of the game. Where as you saw, melee beats range, range beats magic, and magic beats melee. I think that's like the, the main goal of this quest. Is to kind of introduce that to you guys. So you can see the portcullis is lowing, or I guess they call it a spear wall in this. Talk to Caitla. Caitlin, sorry. Uh, let's see what she says. What are you waiting? Finish me off. I have some questions. What? Who are you? I'm a wizard. What do you want? Lumberd's Church. She seems like a bad person. So it looks like she wants to kind of use the, the tombs here to gain immortality for herself. I don't think I like her that much, so I think I'm going to slay her right now by slapping her across the face. She doesn't like me killing her. Oh well. So yeah, right here, as I said, magic is the best thing to use against melee fighters. Um, what is nice about this staff that's given to us is this staff actually gives infinite air runes. So if you look at our spellbook over here, uh, you can see that I always have one air rune, even though I have no air runes in my inventory. The rest of the group is gone. And it's time to fight this mad lad me. So let's put our armor back on. Oh, I guess putting my armor back on cancel the animation. So let's go back down again. Let Mr. Reese here f uh, fight me. We'll see what he says. My name is... I am going to save you. Fight me, Reese. So as I said, 
earlier in the last episode, his weakness is water spells, but uh, ma sorry, mage is the general weakness to melee characters, uh, so magic will do uh, more damage to him compared to range or uh, melee, but water magic will just be the best magic to completely deal his weakness to him. Um, I don't like this person, maybe he's going to sacrifice a person, so I'm not even going to ask him questions. I'm just going to say it is time for you to die. And this is what I'm talking about by unlocking the dungeon. Uh, down here is pretty much like, I could say, like the first dungeon you ever see in the game. We got ourselves some weapons. Let's untie Alana. Save her on up. I think we just exit the, the catacombs automatically. You can see the, or the white, the blue box is around us right now. I'm happy to save your life, Miss Aluna. So he weren't really wounded. I'm by saying that I'm talking to uh, Xenia right here. I think at the thing right here, she just wanted to test me. Uh, I think that is honestly probably not the best test because uh, she just risked this person's life. But apparently, she's saying otherwise. But I don't fully agree with her because I don't want to. Uh, so let's see. So how did I do? Oh, that's not what I meant to click. I clicked the wrong one. So how did I do? Uh, back to my other questions. I'm ready for my reward. Give it to me. So my reward is pretty much the weapons I picked up. I, as you can see here, uh, this kind of explains the charge bow and the staff. Uh, so the staff gives uh, no air runes required. There are other staffs in the game, such as the water staff, um, the fire staff, uh, the mud staff, which give other runes. Uh, the mud staff is more of a complex one because it gives both water and earth runes, um, but I digress. It doesn't matter too much right now. And then the charge bow, of course, uh, just requires no arrows, as it says right there. And we get two more of those treasure hunter keys, which I will spin for your guys' enjoyment. Now let's just go times two. Um, I don't think you can use bonus XP in free-to-play, so I'm kind of avoiding those, which is the main reason I'm clicking the other ones. Um, I guess we'll just go with the, the Divine Tree. So with a Divine Tree is you can pretty much place place it down and it acts as if a tree is there. You know what, let's go Mystery. I don't really need a times two right now. I think Mystery can be any tier two. So we'll go with the Prismatic Lamp. What is a skill we don't like? I honestly don't mind any of the skills, so I'll just put it on an easy skill because I don't want it to affect our gameplay later down the line. So we'll rub this combat, we'll gain all the experience, we'll get a bunch of level ups maybe? Yes. Almost all combat's things leveled up, and we gained level 7 combat. Uh, so here I'm going to kind of, as I just finished this quest, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do quests from now on, and I'm going to do the Restless Ghost without you guys, but I'll at least start it, start it with you guys, but then I will um, just finish the quest and then show you guys the nice thing afterwards. So we'll talk to this guy. I'm looking for a quest. I mean, because of course everyone runs to the churches and asks the father for a quest. That's what everyone does. Let's accept this quest, and now I will see you guys once the quest is completed. And all right, guys, this should be the end of the quest. Mr. Ghost teleports off, or I guess runs away, goes into resting. When we get our uh, our completion, uh, what is this thing called again? Certificate. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. I swear. Oh, what's nice about this is we got these very we got these ancient bones that give 200 XP each, which will get us a ton of per experience. Got a level up right there. Got a second level right there. Oh, I didn't be able to right there. Oh well. Got two levels right there. Probably just very close to the prayer level right there. And got level 14, just like that. Um, some of you guys are probably bothered by all this flashing, so I'll just quickly open them so you guys don't have to deal with the flashing anymore. You can see these are the things I unlocked for prayer. Initiate is a member's thing. You can see right here, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, let's see. I I fire. I did some fire making and some cooking. I cooked these crayfish. You guys may have noticed because I had to fight a little monster over there. Um, pretty much, if you guys are a bit confused, if you run here, there's a rock right here. You have to search to find the uh, ghost skull. If you guys ever are worried about, uh, if you're lost in the quest. You can just look at the quest log right here, or use one of the quest guides that's on the wiki, which I will link in future episodes when I do quests. 
So here's where I kind of want to diverge my path a little bit. I'm actually going to turn the achievement and the activity tracker off. Um, the main reason I'm doing that is because this, the, the past couple episodes, I really haven't been actually uh, playing the game, I guess you could say. I've been just following, well, I guess playing that is playing it, but I really haven't been kind of doing what RuneScape's all about, and that's exploring the world. Uh, so at this point, since I've pretty much done most of the things that I want with you guys, with the quests... Uh, well, well, I guess with the introduction so far, is I'm actually going to turn this account more into a, a progression account. So I'll update you when I up, when I get new skills or whatever. Uh, but what I will also do is um, whenever there's something new, I will, first of all, like the quest I did, I will do it for you uh, at least once and then do it off camera for a bit and then kind of show you, I guess, the rewards from doing it multiple times over. So that's kind of how this account's going to go into next. Um, one of the things I guess I will do now, which is the first time doing it, which you guys have seen a couple times, uh, which is all these achievements. So what achievements are in RuneScape is that they kind of unlock beneficial things for your character. For example, uh, there is an achievement diary in, for Lumbridge slash Draenor, and using this achievement diary you unlock what's called the Explorer's Ring, which you can use to uh, restore your run energy pretty much instantly. So if you climb up the ladder here, you get a very nice achievement for climbing to the highest point in Varok. You can pretty much just view over the city. The mill we milled the things at. The cowfin over there, but I guess it's foggy over there. But another one is actually raising this flag. This is another one of the uh, achievements that are pretty easy. Achievements themselves aren't that hard. The only problem with achievements is a lot of them require a lot of skill requirements to them. So maybe... I think one of the requirements in... Lumbridge actually requires 90, uh, 91, oh, is it, I, th I think cooking, no, it requires, maybe, maybe it's wood cutting, I think you have to, I think you have to do something with that, uh, but I, that doesn't matter right now because we're not focusing on that, all I just wanted to talk about was that achievements are in this game and they can give you also benefits through various armor pieces, for example, um, the ring here or the Varak, which we haven't gone to yet, they will um, give you bonuses when mining and smithing. So what I'm going to do now is kind of another quality of life thing for the account. I'm going to run around the world and I guess it would be easier to show on this screen right here. And I'm going to activate all of these lodestones except the wilderness one because I don't feel like doing that one yet because wilderness content is a whole other uh, thing that a whole other cookie to eat that I don't feel like getting into right now. So I'm going to go around and activate all these lodestones. So once I finish that, I will see you guys soon. Alright guys, I'm just about to unlock the final lodestone um, of the ones that I have access to, except the uh, wilderness, because I, I don't want to do that one just yet, because I don't foresee us using it, the wilderness, anytime soon. And there, we just activated the rest of the lodestones, as you can see here. We got all of them, except the wilderness that is available to us. The other ones, of course, are members, so we cannot use them. Um, I am going to end the video here for today, well, at least the gameplay part of it. Um, it's a bit shorter, but that's because I don't want the episode to get too long. Uh, with my kind of, I guess you can say, account rule set uh, once I finish this clip. Um, tomorrow, as I said, I'm going to focus more on a progression type deal. So what I'll be doing tomorrow is I'll be going through some money makers that low levels like myself and this account can do. Uh, I will also be doing a couple more quests. And finally, I'm going to do some stat upgrading out of probably some attacks and melee. Uh, sorry, like melee and a bit of range too. Getting them maybe to 15 or 20 or something around those lines. All right, so I will see you guys in one second once I start uh, get to the place where I want to be to talk with you guys. Hey guys, before I get into my, my new, I guess you can say rule set slash progression uh, for this account that I'm going that I'm going to go into, I just want to say you guys don't really have to watch it if you don't want to. It's pretty much just going to be me talking about how I'm going to change the account and honestly I don't know if I've worded it too well so it may be easier if you guys just uh, see the next episode later but if you can watch it if you want to i'm going to include it because i still think it it's going to be pretty valuable to have in 
Um, it just talks about what I'm going to go further, how I'm going to further the account. Um, so if you guys are going to head off here, have a wonderful day escaping. And if you guys are going to stick around for the, for the rule discussion and the progression account forward, I'll see you in one second. All right, guys, welcome to my kind of rule update that I said I was going to talk about in the previous clip. Um, as you can see here, I'm just mining because I thought I should at least do something productive while um, talking to you guys about like kind of like my goal for this account and this, this series I've started. Um, so as I said earlier, when I initially made this account, I was just very excited to make um, a series that kind of just helped beginners to the game understand how to play it. And I really never went in with the plan. I, you could probably tell that in the first two episodes that I really didn't know what I was uh, wanting to do and that I wasn't fully sure what um, was the best thing to do. And you probably saw a lot of me almost like second guessing myself in that. So I kind of want to fix that going forward, I guess you can say. Um, so I'm, I'm setting up the series very specifically now. Um, my goal first is to complete all the non-members quests which I'm pretty sure are just the ones that are shown here. Actually, no, I can't do the waterfall quest. Um, so I'll change it around a little bit to make sure it only shows quests I can do. Um, so my first goal would, I guess, be to complete all the quests. Um, my second goal would be to train up my stats to their a decent level. Um, by stats, I only mean my non-member stats. Um, my third goal is I want to be able to complete some bosses on this account too. So my goal for this account is to kill uh, 100 of each of the non-members bosses. Uh, if I recall correctly, the non-members bosses are the King Black Dragon, uh, the Giant Mole, and the um, the Chaos Elemental in the Wilderness. So I guess we will have some wilderness content here that I kind of was nervous about doing in the first place. Uh, just to kind of give you guys an example, or just a tip, it, when you're in the wilderness, other players can attack you and can kill you which is one of the reasons I kind of wanted to stay away from the wilderness. Um, of course, I will be changing it this way, so it will look a lot more like a progression series, like you may see typical, I don't want to say typical, a lot of the other RuneScape uh, YouTubers do. Um, but I do want to stay true to the, the series name of a, a beginner's guide. So I will, whenever I do something new, or that I think will be very helpful to beginners, I will... I don't want to say stop what I'm doing, but I will continue doing what I'm doing, but I will slow down what I'm doing and explain what I'm doing so you guys can understand and gain the benefit of whatever I was doing so that you can do it on your own accounts that you would choose to do. Um, I don't have too much more to say about it besides that it, it will not look as um, similar as it used to in regards to being pretty much one continuous um video or even where you're pretty much just just watching me to go through all the all the um tasks here on the side um so what that's kind of what i want to do going forward uh, sorry I'm, I'm kind of having a honestly a hard time explaining it right now because I, I i don't want to script my videos because i want them to seem natural but sometimes when things are natural and i'm still not used to this yet i i don't really know what i want to say next um i, I may at least try to plan doing a little bit what I want to do. For example, how in the, the previous clip I mentioned how I, 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 how I was going to do those certain tasks, uh, whether it was doing the quests, uh, the money makers that I mentioned, or just training my combats a little bit up. And I will hopefully at the end of each episode kind of explain what I want to next episode so you guys can understand. Um, sorry if this, this talk is a bit boring. It's, it's just what it is. I, I just wanted to tell you guys that I'm sorry if, if my first two episodes were a bit on the boring side um, and were just me just talking talking at you with gameplay in the background and not gameplay with, with talking, um, which I'm definitely going to try to fix in the future. I, I will probably switch to this um, shorter clips that I've been doing, as you see in this episode, where I've kind of just ran around. I, I pretty much tested that when I was doing uh, like the Cook's Assistant quest that I did previously. And then, of course, as you saw, I didn't even show anything besides me completing the Restless Ghost quest. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going to do now. Um, I, I don't have any other plans for uh, kind of this rule session, so I'll take it by ear. Some of this may change um, 
but I, I highly doubt a lot of it will. The, the same gist will stay the same. The only thing that might change is the amount of boss kills or something like that, or I may want to go for higher stats than not. Um, or may, I, think, I think probably my, my final episode of the series, once I complete all of the things, will most likely be, uh, I don't know, maybe buying a bond or something, or just something along those lines, or maybe getting some the, like the best in slot uh, armors that a non members can get for each combat type. Uh, so I just want to say thank you very much, guys, for sticking through this probably horrible rules rule discussion um, or horribly worded rule discussion. And I want to thank you guys for watching my third episode. Uh, thank you again for uh, <laughs> sticking with me through all this, uh, I guess, nonsense that I've been doing so far. And I really hope that once I start tomorrow, you guys will find much more interest in my videos. Uh, of course, they, they'll probably be more shorter than the 35, 40 minutes I've been doing so far. Maybe around the 25 or 30 minute mark or even a bit less, depending on how how much time it takes, I guess, to do it. Um, so again, thank you guys very much for watching today. I will see you in tomorrow's episode four, doing the money making, doing the combat training, and then doing some quests. Have a wonderful day escaping, everyone. Peace out.